everyone and welcome to the launch of black our stories thank you so much for joining us my name is Olela Malanga and I am so excited to tell you about this project so for those of you who don't know black our stories is a collaborative event by the living and learning programs department at Nelson Mandela University along Boss Eternal and Kuku Petenium as you know, 2020 has been devastating in so many ways and so many things had to be cancelled and uh, one of these being the graduation ceremonies. As a graduate myself, I can't tell you how hard it was not getting the chance to be robed and walk on a stage and receive a degree I'd worked so hard and long for. But this is a new way that we are going to celebrate and highlight how important this moment is. We've chosen seven graduates who have amazing stories of their journey towards graduation. This is what this documentary will be about. Uh, Boss Eternal has created seven fabrics that will be named after each of our graduates in honor of the road they have traveled in order to obtain their qualifications. The fabrics will then be used by Kuku Peteni to create a fashion range that will be showcasing on the 27th of February, 2021. The show will be virtual because we're still in a pandemic and you can show your support uh, by purchasing a ticket on Quicket. The link will be in the description bar below. Proceeds from the show will be used to support a fashion design student at the Nelson Mandela University for 2021. So get your friends and your family and your exes to buy a ticket so that we can assist somebody else not go through the struggles that we went through while we were still students. I really hope you enjoyed this documentary and you enjoy the launch and we're looking forward to hearing your feedback and of course we're looking forward to seeing you on the 27th of february 2021 let's make it happen enjoy the show 2020 took a lot from us one of these things is the graduation season to some that may seem insignificant but to us this is an important moment graduation is more than about getting your qualification it's more than just walking across the stage for a mere two minutes. It's an acclamation of what it took to get here, to get out. And for most of us, it's about overcoming the financial burdens, the personal sacrifices, as well as acknowledging our family sacrifices. And mostly, it's about a hope for an entire family, entire generations to come. It's an I made it moment. It's a life changing moment. These are our stories. Okay, for university, I'll go with challenging. And then for graduation, I'll go with exquisite. Finally, and sad. A sleeping break. My graduation moment was like uh, a transition, but that was supposed to be seen as an end. My name is Rachel Chasakara. I am a final year doctorate student. I'm from Zimbabwe and now I'm working on my research on marine spatial planning. It's something ocean science is related. Hi, my name is Asitandile Amanchili Bekewana and I am from originally Kaiskama Kobo Kobo. I live in Danzane in East London and I studied LLB at Nelson Mandela University. My name is Rory Daile. The R is for royalty. I just have to. Um, I was born in Port Elizabeth and I lived here for the first nine years of my life. Then in 2006, when I was nine, going on 10, my father got work overseas in Ireland um, that there's a radiographer by profession and he went there 2001, we joined him 2006. So I lived there most of my life and then I wanted to come study the site the whole time I was there. Um, I just wanted to be home and I came back 2015 to study the site. I did business management at Nelson Mandela University and that's why I said finally because for me that was like my finally. I wanted to be back. Yeah. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> 
I started my business, which is Royal Nails, PE at the end for anyone who wants to search it online. Um, I started the business in my second year of studying. So I, like I said, I was doing business management and I thought to myself, what's the point of studying all about entrepreneurship Gandhi I'm still gonna go look for work at that point I was like before going out there let me have something so that in case anything doesn't go according to plan I've got something but yeah that something put me through something and is still doing so many things for me just by starting this one business my name is Ayanda Michael Wangwanya originally from Durban Guazulu Natal born and raised there um, shipped myself down all the way to Port Elizabeth to pursue studies in the Eastern Cape. What do I do? I'm a student res manager and a student digs. Plus, I'm also trying to stay busy. Um, so, what a course am I doing um, at the moment? Or what course did I do? I pursued a degree, a BA degree in business management and public administration. At the moment, I'm doing an honors, a BCom honors. My name is Mkulule Gustavi Sombat, uh, all the way from KZN Ladysmith to be specific. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur uh, working towards being uh, a business mogul, <laughs> if there is such. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I came to university to study uh, towards a profession called uh, Chartered Accountancy. And all of that began when I was in, I think, grade 7 where I walked in checkers and discovered that, no man, who is this guy who, who runs this whole thing? And it happened to be a business that was started by a chartered accountant. And as I researched more about the profession itself, I also discovered that Chappie's Bubblegum was also uh, a, a business that was started by a chartered accountant. So my business interests ended up falling into a profession of chartered accountancy. So yeah, that's, that's what I came here for, but that's not what I, at the end of the day, took out of it. So yeah, at the end of the day, I became a fully established entrepreneur, which I would say the, the idea of becoming a chartered accountant was also leading me to my true calling, which is be an entrepreneur. backwards but it's fun you know my motto is live laugh and love um i love to laugh you know me by now i love to love and i love love and i just realized that i'm only living now i i was literally go to class go home i'm not saying i wouldn't buy myself in a very low way and get on a friday but you know, as a student, I did not really live the student life, unfortunately. I don't know if it's unfortunate, but Kungo, oh, but the thing is, I was just about to enjoy, start like enjoying myself just after graduation. Um, I remember the last time I went out just after graduation, Coxa Fines, I still haven't stepped foot there. I was starting to be like, okay, I've done, I've paid my dues, let me reward myself, then bam, I'm pregnant. So yeah. I began my journey in 2014. I was admitted into the five-year NLP extended program. And I remember it felt like a lifetime. I was like, oh my God, I'll be doing high school again. You know, and at the time our vice chancellor or Professor Swat was talking about Vision 2020. We we're like, oops, Vision 2020, we won't be here. It's fine, it doesn't include us. Oh, let me tell you, darling. Okay. Uh, Vision 2020 came and we were there, we were still there. And so um, my journey really, I've always been a busy person. So I began being busy, you know, uh, in 2014 when I saw there was an opening to be a vice, uh, sorry, a house committee member. I ran for that position and I've been busy ever since. And um, I then went on to associate myself with student politics and student leadership. And I joined BLA, the Black Lawyers Association student chapter, which I later led. And um, that was really my whole life. That's a brand that you would associate me with if you talk about BLA and say, oh, it's Tandy, you know, someone would probably say, oh, BLA. That's what we were. It, 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 it was a movement. It was um, family. It was... Uh, 
committing to put others before ourselves and um, never wanting to make it to the finish line on your own. And so the plight of black students and the plight of black poor students in the university and how they are able to show up and translate themselves and communicate what they need and communicate how the university could, um, you know, uh, position itself to help black students get to the finish line. It was a whole different uh, dialogue that needed a, ch a lot of championing and it, need it was a movement that needed black students to speak for other black students. So that's who I am, that's who I've always been. I hate injustice with everything that I've got and I've, I've always hated being bullied. I, had, I hate bullies. If you're going to bully someone in front of me, you trust believe I'm going to come for you. Uh, I hate people who um, oppress and, and I hate oppression with everything that I have got and um, I'm, I'm a believer in give someone a chance, give someone an opportunity to show um, who they are and what they're capable of, you know, before you discount them just because of their background of how they speak their English or how they dress. That's, that's the thing, those things are not for me. So yeah, that's been my journey. I came here in first year wanting to be a lawyer and um, my family was the one that was funding me. I couldn't get any government funding. But then halfway through the year, uh, things went south in my family and there was no more money to support me in terms of food and tuition and accommodation for the other years. So the only option for me was to defer, uh, get a job, probably help the family out with school fees and everything. But then I told myself I could not be an adult yet. I had to finish my degree to be the lawyer that I wanted to be. And then after that, then I can work. So I started looking for work. I went to the dean of the law faculty then. I told them, um, them my problem, if there was any funding opportunities, if there were any jobs, they should tell me so that I work for uh, my tuition and accommodation fees. Then I was also looking for jobs part-time around Summer Strand and I got my first job as a cashier at Roman's Pizza which was giving me at least about 15 rand an hour. So with balancing of school and the work it didn't leave much time for me to be cashiering at Roman's Pizza so I didn't make much the, the money that I was supposed to work. I would work at max five hours a day. Then uh, my dean called me the other time and then said you know there are these uh, student jobs that we give so you could be a researcher you could invigilate you could mark or you could tutor some children it just depends with what you want but there are those opportunities so to my surprise i went to her and i told her i want to do everything so i want to invigilate i want to mark i want to research i want to tutor and all and she asked me how are you going to do that no one has ever done it then i was like let's do it as a pilot program and then uh see how it goes then she goes all right so she gave me all those contracts and then i started small and then by the end of it, after about four years, I was doing 10 jobs at the university and I still managed to graduate in record time and I got graduated in distinction. University challenges and key moments. I think one of the biggest challenges I had when I was, when I was almost kicked out of university for not having money to pay for my tuition and some of the other expenses old, yeah. And then, tada, you know, I'm here now. <laughs> um, the other more challenges I've had is just staying up and studying, man. It's, 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 it's another kind of hardship. It's spiritual. No one is beating you uh, with a belt and no one is persecuting you or taking you to jail. But it definitely feels like jail. <laughs> My biggest challenge was at the beginning, I was like... How do I enter the university space? How do I become a chartered accountant? Looking at my financial background, it was very poor, like there was no chance. So I, I, I at Matric decided that my hustle today in order to get myself into that space, I need to really focus on my academics, which I did. And luckily I got, not even luckily, deservedly, I got a, a, a bursary. So that bursary took care of everything, bro, like everything. So that's why I even said university to me was a sleeping break. Because during that phase, I wasn't paying attention to a lot of things until I failed my third year. So failing my third year called for me to be like, 
where is the Nesfas offices, where are food parcels, where are, where are, where are all these options now? Because I had been previously taken care of. So that journey started unfolding into what I had really desired to be, which is an entrepreneur, somebody who solves problems for himself and also monetize that problem for the greater population. So yeah, that's, that's how I ended up being the person I am. Our first business was, was, was during when uh, I was repeating my third year. So I met, okay, there was this guy I was in the parcel with who got knocked out earlier than, than me, who started his entrepreneurial journey before me. So there was this business called The Plate. The Plate was supposed to bring uh, franchises into the university space, like how you find in Joburg. So we, in negotiations with the, the, the high people in the university, plus your Tiger brands, your famous brands, then they gave us uh, this company called um, Panarotti's Pizza. So the Panarotti's Pizza was going so well until a point where we had to be allocated space. So not getting that space because of financial interest of the person who was bearing the office and with the cafeterias, we couldn't get the space and our business had to shut down at that point. So my journey continued until I started um, Umpago, which was early 2017, uh, I was writing a sub. No, it wasn't even a sub, it was a, a deferred exam because it was during the 2016 uh, FISMAS fall, which pushed some of our exams to the, the, to the beginning of the year 2017. So during that break or transition, I was like, I need money and I had to make means to find a uh, 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 Oh, to, to make a living. So I started a muffin business and I sold muffins from then until today. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, my, I, I couldn't stop talking about, about nails. Um, my, my, my mom, my late mom inspired my nail journey from the get-go when I was still young. I've always just loved to play around with nails. So when I first got the kit, I just went on YouTube I watched every video that had to do with nails because I was like, hey, so you, you've got varsity fees and everything, so you can't afford right now to go for a course. So I taught myself just using that little kit. Um, I did not have money at the time, but I told myself I'm just going to make this work somehow. And I remember I started at Gomery Avenue and there were students, but there were not a lot of people doing nails at the time. This is 2016. And I, I, I just decided but now, if I do this well I had like a, pl a plan in my head I'm like if I start now I'm, I should graduate 2018 and I just calculated a lot of so when I graduated I knew that this is what I'm going to stick to and the challenges I faced were definitely location because at some point I had to move out of summer and I was like I can't take the rent anymore um, I went to Richmond Hill, but then when I got to Richmond Hill, I'm like, hey, you just lost clients. There are clients who don't want to go up that hill because they feel very, very frightened for their life. So it's, it's been a journey, but um, yeah. For me, actually, graduation does not did not mean what other families would perceive it meant. Because other families would be like, now we have a lawyer, now the money is going to come and all. To my family, it was uh, it was an emotional moment where my mother could not even afford the fees, and she was the one who was supposed to take care of of the tuition and accommodation, and I managed to do that by, by myself. And to make matters worse, I am a twin, so halfway through my degree, my twin also said he wanted to come and be here. So I was busy balancing my own tuition and accommodation and my brother's tuition and accommodation and also making sure that at home at least they had at least a meal a day. So when I graduated, it was a sign of anyone can do it. You know, you can do it regardless of funding. You can do it. You can work, you can study, and you can still come up top of your class. One word that would have described graduation, still describes graduating for me is victory. You know, I am a child of a single mom. Um, the journey, <laughs> I can't even get into it because, wow, well, um, it would have, it means victory. It would have meant victory. It still means a victory. 
um, as you see, I've got my attire, darling. We do not wait for nobody to celebrate us. Okay? So, we had our little celebration because we know the work and hard work that we've actually put into this journey. We are absolutely graduating. It's still graduation vibes in my house until, until, until we're sick of it. Um, it it's a victory. It's a win for all of us. It, it's a win for everyone who's prayed everybody who's ever contributed you know when you're a child of a single black parent it's quite rare that your mom is the only one that made it you know made everything work together you know so it's a it's a celebration of, of my family my community my church everybody who's been involved in raising me and being influential and um just create uh, having an impact in my life so that's what it means it means a victory honey uh, for my family, it was significant. Uh, significant, I could say that by the way, and they conducted the whole process, and uh, and them sacrificing a lot for it for that particular period. We have family businesses at home. They had to shut down during that period. They drove from KZN to PE for the first time, and yeah, like. It, it was a dope experience for me, seeing my parents on the other side of the world and actually celebrating that five minute uh, walk on the stage. But it was more than that. So yeah. So what does graduation mean for me and my family? Look, I'll be honest, for me it means nothing. Um, particularly because there's nothing that I could study or at, an, at, a, at a public or formal institution that could give me what I want or figure that out personally. Okay, does studying help? Yes, kids go to school, it does help, but it's not all that, you know what I mean. Um, so what graduation means for my family, though, big things because again, you have to understand, I mean, we like we black, so any form of certification or formal qualification is a license to make money, and that's what we need as black people, you know what I mean. So yeah, to stay alive and to survive, to get good jobs and to prosper in the world of formality and corporacy or, or, or corporate or whatever. Graduation from, for, okay, I'll just start for my family. Um, yeah, my Tetela, I, I would like to think that they are super proud of me because, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a journey. But, and get, I could say in a way I'm the first to graduate as well. From my side, okay, besides my parents, but since it's like in terms of siblings and stuff, so, and I'm the eldest daughter, so it was something, especially for my dad. Um, but for me personally, a lot of my family don't know. For uh, I was not excited because um, I feel one the one person that I wanted to be there out of. Yeah, I'm not saying everyone that was, guys, please, I'm not saying they shouldn't have been there, but my, I feel like my mom had to be there. I know she was there in spirit, but um, that's why I say by my graduation was sad for them, not personally, but it's life and it, yeah. Uh. My research about university was based on the American Pie. I'm not sure if you are aware. So it was this playful uh, place where one gets to explore all sides of, of, of himself and, 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 and all to do with freedom. Uh, it happened to be that it, it was totally the opposite for me because I came into a system whereby there was a bursary. Therefore, we had to attend study sessions. We had to conduct ourselves in a certain way. After classes, we had to attend some sessions. Like our time was really controlled to the T until we got paid that maybe a uh, month end, then we could like do something with our money. But most of the time we, we are in this uh, line of, 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 of discipline and it was totally opposite to what I, I had envisioned. But the moment I started grabbing control of myself, it happened to be that university slowly be became what I had envisioned. You know, um, so what would I do better if I could go back? Look, I am back. <laughs> I'm doing an honors, a become honors again, and it's just still hard. What I'd do better is definitely give more time to study, but that's hard. 
um yo i think i'd study harder you know what i mean um is there anything else that's relevant i don't know self self help and i'd say learning is deeper than reading books in a formal institution um learning is progressive it's objective it's you have to learn with purpose you know and most importantly learn something that you love to learn about so that you don't have to feel like you're going through hell when studying you know it's it's literally torture but that's it folks oh uh, i came to university because of the movie legally blonde i wanted to be ill woods if you've watched the movie L was this uh, slay queen who wanted to do law at Harvard. She got a place at Harvard and instead of wearing dark colors, she was wearing pink colors, going to court, being all cute and all. So I thought this was going to be me. But newsflash, you had to study, you had to work, you had to do everything else. I don't think I had an opportunity to slay during my undergrad. <laughs> it was just, my friends at one point were just like, do you even care what you wear? It's just like, it doesn't matter at the moment. What matters is the degree. Not at all. Not at all. Um, it wasn't, and I've, I've never really had friends and all of that, but I came out and I, I met you, first of all. You were the first person I wrote down and I was answering this question because in, in, in I feel like as much as uh, you wouldn't find us just hanging out or something like that this is how we meet it's something it's something constructive i've met people like you i've met so many other people that have inspired me in university to just keep going and 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 whatnot ah in the next three years i should be by then a doctor so hopefully i'll be dr chasakara uh, working towards publishing my final articles for professorship and uh, marriage is not really there for me so I wouldn't say I will have a family but I think career wise I will be where I need to be. Where do I sell, see myself in three years? Oh child, listen I've learned to shut up you know and not say much and just move quietly but it's a dream for anyone is to have progress you know to not stand in one place to move on and um, go on to different levels and different dimensions. I want progress. I want progress. And I just want to be ready for that progress. And I want to be perfectly positioned to see the lessons that also come with that progress. So three years is going to be another whirlwind, another journey. But one thing that's going to remain is me, darling. In three years time, I will definitely be chilling, enjoying my billions enjoying the money that i'm trying to make now just to keep myself and my baby going because hey <laughs> that's definitely it's just, i just want to make more money guys and meet people like you uh, i see myself in the next three years running a multi-million rand business and yeah like i feel like it's 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 very close now compared to where i'm coming from yeah like how underrated is graduating as a black person? Like completely, I feel like we just skate over it, like it's, it's a, not a big deal. I feel like Mako like a culture where like black people couldn't strive to achieve or get educated or get along and then a few seconds later we were all graduating, walking down the stage. We never took a minute to be like, we're here, you know? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a big moment, uh, <clears throat> especially since our parents, you know, had such a big struggle getting into mm. schools, yeah. actually getting a, a high education qualification, mm. and then Tina, it's just like one of those things, but it's not. I mm. mean, when I think of university, I'm like, yeah, tense, my guy. You can <laughs> say that again. <laughs> tense. I think university for me was the first time, my first year actually was the first time I realized you could get a negative bank balance. Wow. I was like, minus 22 rand. Cool. Oh, God, I have so many of those stories. Like, it was just a financial struggle. I look at myself as an adult. I'm like, 
I survived on literally like the bare minimum yeah. <laughs> during varsity, and now I can I like I have a salary, but I can still I can never make it. But yeah, varsity was a was a stretch financially. Was, yeah. It was a mess, messy, messy. <laughs> yeah, I remember one time I owed nine months rent in my second year. Uh, fortunately, the risk manager let me stay. And then I eventually got money through the Nelson Mandela bursary or something mm. like that. There was just money in my account, mm. like Jeez. a few months later. And wow. then eventually got on NASPAS. But, and then I started failing university. Then I got depressed. Oh. Then I got burnt out. Then I failed even more. And then I hated my course even more. It was mm. the whole thing. So many people can relate to that. I mean, when I started fashion and in fashion there's zero bursaries. Mm. Like zero. I came back. I came from an academic background. In high school, I was academic. I was an academic. English came like yeah, and pop Then the academic, which is so ironic because I can't speak English. <laughs> so when I told my parents um, that <clears throat> I wanted to go into arts, you can figure out that fight out. Yeah. And because Bindi had bursaries lined up, had scholarships lined up, I was like, no, I want to be an artist. Mm. So I had to go to counseling, long story short, and I figured out fashion, zero bursaries. So I had to kind of push a play by myself. Yeah. Um, now I can relate to your stories. I mean, at some point, you know, get good art, you, your life is your craft. So you had varsity until like 3 a.m., 2 a.m., the whole Monday to Sunday. Mm. We went to spa, and I think we had like eight rent between the two of us trying oh, to get goodness. a stack. I mean, like those things, they, they grow you and they groom yeah. you and they humble you a lot in life. Yeah. So shout out to Varsity for making us strong. Yo. Yeah, I, I have to say I agree. I mean, and that's why it's so important to, when you finally get to graduate, it's such a big deal. And mm -hmm. I think for me, what's most important is it took me so long to actually get to the point where I passed all my modules. Yeah. Uh, and then having been told, yo, you're not going to graduate this, this year, you're not going to get that two minutes on the no. stage with a pretty little outfit. Um, so that was a bit tough. So I think that's why we're doing this show is to, is, is to Shine. recognize yeah. that, hey girl, wambi hile, panze wafa. But look, you're here now um, exactly. and don't take it lightly. Mm -hmm. So, and I think it's also about recognizing that this is not only for us yes. but it's about our families our families our ancestors our grandfathers my dad Begum Kondo is there so at my age he was out here hustling and busting the streets trying to create a future for us so it's incredible that we get to sit here and have opportunities like this to do stuff like this so shout out it's great mm. and another great thing about this show is that we get to assist someone especially in the fashion department because yeah. you guys have no money no money and so many art supplies yeah <laughs> <laughs> we get to assist someone find their education just mm. making the journey a little easier, easier so that yeah. they don't have to go through they must have one struggle yeah not a lot not a lot some part of their lives must be sorted. Yes. they can buy fabric now yeah at least. yeah at least <laughs> so yeah that's why i think this show is important for us it's about highlighting the journey it's about celebrating the victories <clears throat> but it's also about assisting someone going forward exactly into the go future. further because um we both at some point frosty needed someone just to be like ina here relax her. <laughs> that's so, it yeah also about the show, so Kolela did the prints. We all know Kolela's amazing work and her beautiful prints Thank you. and artwork that she does. So maybe you can elaborate on that. All right, my bad. Mm. Yo, listen. Okay, these prints are Ooh. are named after seven individuals who have faced different struggles, but have found a way to you know to make it through. Um, so each fabric is going to be named after a former student or graduate rather. Uh, and then Ukuk, of course, is making his clothes out of this damn fabric. Guys, listen, imagine after ten when Ukuk The prince make it easy. The prince, <laughs> the prince came and was like, ah, easy. <laughs> yeah, but the, the collection, um, I mean, the, the, the whole project is titled Black Our Stories. So we're working on black and white. Um, the collection is street. It's, it's, it defines our youth or our generation today. It's bold, it's in your face, it's mm. daring. Like you're not going to wear the garments or have the collection and just stand back. You're going to have something to say in an effortless way. So yeah. I'm super excited. Um, yeah, it's about great. And it was very cool of Testic to actually oh, find man. this for us. They and gave us... Duma and the ECDFC. And I always forget. <laughs> You're part of the council. I am, but because it's a DC, always like e e Eastern Cape Fashion and Design, Design Council. So I can say it, but yeah. don't ask me to, to abbreviate it. it. Yeah. Gone. And also living and learning, they came <gasps> through with in a major way. I'm so grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Loving it. And it's so on brand with like what we're trying to do and them yeah. like supporting. So yes. shout outs. 
a lot to see. And also with so many other artists that we're collaborating with. Yes. So on the day, there's going to be so many people and so many local crew. Guys, PE is the hub for just it. So PE's finest will be here showcasing some of their beautiful work. So yeah, a lot of hands went into this and we're so excited. Thank you to Paulette with her baby, so bringing me on board and doing this with us. Doing I wanted an us. excuse to work with you, so that came through <laughs> perfectly. It's awesome. gonna be key. Yes. It's gonna be keen. <laughs> All right, the tickets are available online. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the link below.